Good morning. My name is Sayed Singh, host of the Army Finance and Comptroller Profession Series, and welcome. We'd like to start off by welcoming everyone tuned in for today's exciting segment with guests from the Finance and Comptroller School at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, home of the Finance Corps. At this time, it gives me pleasure to introduce to you the Commandant of the Finance and Comptroller Schoolhouse, Colonel Gregory Worley. Sir, welcome, and please, the mic is yours. Hey, Sergeant Singh, I greatly appreciate it. You know, I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to, to Emily and you both uh, for this opportunity. So, you know, in public, hey, I, I thank you so much for this uh, great opportunity. Hey, real quick, we've got, I think we have a, uh, a good lineup of instructors today. And I, I think what you'll hear is a, a couple of themes. You know, first of all, uh, serving down here at Fort Jackson, I, I come from the operational army just like everybody else, you know, 32 years in the army, never served in trade doc. Uh, didn't really understand what SSI and the finance comptroller school did, what the purview was, uh, and was pleasantly surprised when I showed up here about 18 months ago. And just kind of a couple of things that, that I've captured here that I feel are value added to help shape people's mindsets a little bit is, you know, when you come here, there's some unique opportunities. First and foremost, you get an opportunity to shape the core. All right. And, you know, I think back to when I was a lieutenant colonel at, at the 82nd, you know, we were just getting the brigade S8s up and running. And you could make the argument that we potentially had a hole in our swing. That hole was closed at the schoolhouse. That hole was closed by instructors, you know, back in the day, the Sergeant Sings of the world and all the folks from about 2014 to about 2020 uh, that helped get that thing across the line and ensure that we were teaching and educating folks uh, the right way. So you get this opportunity that's unique in shaping leaders and soldiers. And uh, what most people don't understand is every single 36 Bravo in the Army, National Guard and Army Reserve goes through one company. So being an AIT instructor or being a 36 Bravo drill sergeant with duty at uh, 369 AG Battalion, which is where Echo Company is, is tremendous because you touch every single soldier. Uh, we run four bullets a year and we run two triple C's a year. And what's unique about our branch is we actually run our courses. So our instructors teach our courses. We don't have someone do it for us. You know, it's a, it's a little bit different in the logistics world up at Fort Lee. So you get that one on one uh, with the young and upcoming officers. So get a chance to shape the core. Two, what's unique specifically about teaching um, is you get instant feedback. And I tell people, you know, this is what I mean. Uh, if you're an actor and you act in movies, it's six, seven, eight months from the time you make a movie till you figure out if anyone likes it or not. But if you're an actor and you work on Broadway, you know instantly because you have a live audience that's giving you that feedback. Well, likewise, as an instructor down here at the schoolhouse, you get that instant feedback from the student body. And you can see, you know, it's, it's very rewarding to watch these young troopers learn, grow, ask questions uh, as you're getting back to number one, shaping the core. I tell folks, and I think, you know, if any of you out there run into First Sergeant Cook, you know, soon to be Master Sergeant Mumford, uh, others who have worked here at the schoolhouse, Sergeant Singh, uh, they will tell you that the work is hard, rewarding, but it's predictable. Your schedule is predictable. So just the fact that you're kind of out of the operational army, you know, there's going to be just like everything else in the army, you're going to have some staff duty here and there and things like that, but you can actually plan with your family when you're going to take vacation. You know when the cycle breaks are. Um, so, you know, while you're at work, to be honest with you, you're grinding. So, you know, the folks that have the mindset that, hey, I'm going to go to Jackson and take a knee, I I'll just say up front, we don't need you. Like, it, it's, it's just not, it just doesn't work like that. Uh, but you will have that, uh, that predictability. And really, the only thing that's close to it, predictable wise in the Army is, Korea potentially, you know, from your first day in Korea, you know what you're doing 365 days later. The schedule is pretty much set. I would tell you that it, it's a lot like that here. 
So that's uh, that's something to think about if you're at that stage to where that's what you're looking for after you've uh, knocked out some of your KD time. Next thing I would tell you is Columbia is just a, it's a fantastic area. Centrally located, I didn't come to appreciate this, you know, when I was up at the Pentagon, but we're only 65, 70 miles from Charlotte, which means you can get on a plane and be anywhere in the world fairly quickly. You know, we have a lot of folks that go back to Puerto Rico. You can fly to the West Coast, you know, so depending on your family situation, there's a major airport 70 miles away. You're about two and a half, three hours from Atlanta. Columbia itself is wonderful. Got the University of South Carolina. School districts for children. Lexington, you're basically getting a private school education uh, for, you know, in a public school system. So Lexington schools um, are, are pretty good for our folks. You can be in the mountains in about an hour and a half. You can be at the beach in about an hour and a half. That's not bad. So uh, so for your family life, I, I would offer that you take a look at Columbia. Just the location of where we are is a pretty good deal. And the last thing I would tell you is uh, pretty tight knit team. So the finance corps, it's the smallest branch in the army. Um, we, we basically, everyone knows everyone, if you will, you know, uh, we are just, just to throw some numbers at you. We're less than one half of 1% of the army's in strength. Now we're small, but mighty, you know, we, we control a, a pretty amazing asset as we pay the army's way, uh, no matter where it's at. But we're a tight knit team here uh, at the schoolhouse. And I think what you would see is, you know, we all give way together. I don't care if AIT is in the field, bullets in the field, triple C's in the field. There's just it, it's a good environment to where you see a lot of teamwork. And I think the folks that come through, you know, we, we haven't always gotten it right in the past. I, I think we're uh, making some strides. I think uh, Colonel Herner made some, definitely made some strides a couple of years ago, but we're starting to shift toward LISCO, large scale combat operations. We're adding rigor into everything we do, but that causes all of the instructors to work together, give way together. But as you see your students and your future subordinates come through the schoolhouse, you can really shape them um, into the folks that we need to fight and win the next war. So, hey, sort of saying, you know, pending any questions, that's really all I have. I'd, I'd really rather or prefer to kick it over to all the instructors out there. We've got the NCO Academy folks. OK, tremendous organization. Uh, they run all the AOC SLC here at Fort Jackson. And then uh, I know we've got AIT teed up and I think I see Captain Mendel and team on there. So uh, I'll turn it up, you know, depending on any questions, I'll turn it over to you. No, sir, I think uh, thank you again. We'd just like thank you for your uh, opening remarks and uh, appreciate you coming on. Um, and and at this time, we're actually going to go forward and and take it over to um, to the to the instructors. Uh, so you know more to follow, I guess, if if we come back. But uh, again, thank you for for you know just joining us for this short moment. So at this time, what we're going to do, team, is uh, we're actually going to head over and go directly to. Um, the basic officer leader course instructor uh, who is uh, Captain Mindell. So uh, over to you, Captain Mindell, if you can go ahead and just introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what exactly you're doing uh, while you're serving in that role. Uh, good morning, Sergeant Singh. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So while I'm in this role, I am a primary instructor for the Bullock. Uh, what I do is we take the new lieutenants from day one of their Bullock course. Uh, all the way through. Uh, it's very rewarding so far. Uh, we've been teaching, you know, we teach everything here. So down to the basics of CVS, all the way up to dispersing. Uh, as I said, it's a very rewarding job. I get to mold these lieutenants and not only mold them, but teach them things that I wouldn't necessarily or would have, what I would have liked to know when I was a fresh new lieutenant going to Force Common Fort Riley. Uh, we have a lot of autonomy here, so I'm able to kind of do it the way I want to do it. Um, you know, we have our POI and we have our curriculum, but we're also allowed to do it the way that we believe it should be taught. Uh, like I said, very rewarding. It's also rewarding to be able to make your own hours as far as in between courses and uh, design the course you, the way you want to. You can kind of set your own schedule as long as you're within the standards. Uh, so I'm going to hand it off to Captain Miller here, who is uh, one of our uh, functional instructors. 
So How actually, before we, we go over to Captain Miller, you know, let's let's address something that you kind of said. Um, okay. So you mentioned that, you know, you you're able to not only tweak that schedule that you already have while obviously staying within, you know, um, regulations and or policy that that's pushed out through the finance and control of school. But let's talk about something that you mentioned in reference to, you know, kind of teach the course according to things that maybe you were looking forward to when you were in that seat, right, as a student. So let's let's emphasize a little bit about that. What are things that you were looking at and what is the feedback that you have received now from your students in reference to those kind of changes that you were able to implement? So absolutely, uh, as far as stuff I wish I would have known kind of going into it, uh, a lot of the stuff we're teaching is straight off a of doctrine, but when you're when you're here and you're with them every day, you're kind of teaching them other things. Maybe it's minor things like how to run a training meeting, something that may not pertain to finance, or uh, just how we run a daily day-to-day uh, -day office. Stuff that, uh, while not indoctrinated, that we in the Army overall, you know, how we know, kind of the processes we know. Uh, and like I said, just stuff that I wish I would have known beforehand, and hopefully the lieutenants are taking that and uh, building on it. Gotcha, sir. Um, let me ask you this. Um, what has been one of your hardest challenges while you've been in the sea as that instructor? And is this something that maybe when you were a student, you sat there and thought that, oh, this is probably easy. Uh, you know, anyone can do this. What are what your thoughts on that? I mean, I, it's just getting on the podium for me was uh, just becoming an instructor. It's kind of intimidating, you know, and you also have to be able to uh, be okay with being wrong sometimes, right? We don't know it all, even as instructors, and we have to be able to, you know, admit when we're wrong and help the uh, help our students find the correct answers. Awesome, sir. I appreciate that answer. Um, now we're gonna actually go over to Captain Miller. Um, so, Captain Miller, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you do um, at the schoolhouse as well. Thank you. Good morning, Sergeant Stan. Good morning, everyone. I am Captain Miller. I am a functional instructor here, and what that means is that I teach the technical aspects of finance. So, CBS dispersing some resource management and any other area that I needed, to be honest. So, this has actually been the most rewarding assignment that I've had in my decade of service because I actually get the opportunity to teach a brand new uh, person to the finance corps, whether it be a lieutenant or sometimes I even have captains. I teach resident triple C, I teach Bullock, I also teach reserve triple C courses. I have taught courses to civilians in the past. I've taught branch qualification courses and I even have field grades in those classes. And to see someone who is brand new to the finance corps be able to go from day one, not understanding what dispersing even was, to within a few weeks be able to actually execute it and use proper terminology to me is a, a greater success. So that's what makes it so rewarding for me being here because you actually get to mold them, you get to teach them things. You may not be able to prepare your students for everything, but you're able to give them that technical background that they otherwise would not have had. And that's my main reason for wanting to be an instructor here in the first place. And I was very honored to be selected for that particular role. Awesome, Captain Miller. Um, Captain Miller, I got to ask, someone actually asked a question, right? And they said that, hey, you know, in relation to force comm budgets, right, being spent on, you know, the other major categories of, you know, class items, right? Um, are there any GCSSA uh, type classes being offered at the schoolhouse? Now, I'm not sure if you want to, uh, if you can answer that, but are you teaching um, any material that's in relation to GCSSA as well? Um, if you can, you can allude to that, please. So currently, anything beyond an introductory course is not within the POI. That is something, though, that I do believe will eventually be incorporated because, as you pointed out, it's important. It's something they actually need to know how to do. So when we do talk G Army, any kind of introductory things, we actually tell them, hey, it's just like GFIS. We try to give them an idea. But as far as going into that actual sandbox, no, it's not something we incorporate right now. Perhaps the Commandant or whoever uh, follows him, we want to introduce that. Awesome. So um, one thing on that, let's talk about uh, POI, right? So that's program of instruction, right? Um, for, for the audience that's not tracking or is not in the trade doc world. How much can you leverage or how much can you shift while staying within left and right limits um, as instructors uh, for that? 
and and this also ties in with what Captain Mondale said earlier in relation to you know being able to kind of tweak or adjust schedules as well. Uh, when it comes to program instruction, you have you know set hours that you need to teach for a related subject. What can you all do as instructors to kind of when you're facilitating that instruction? How do you kind of uh, you know change it or or make sure that that POI is also in relation to what's actually happening in the field? That is a great question. So one of the good things about being at an assignment like here at the Finance and Comptroller School is the level of flexibility that we have, and Captain Mondo did touch on that. So what we've actually done once we've been here is anything that we bring with us from Forcecom. For example, I left the FMSC Financial Management Support Center, which is the brigade level finance unit. I left that unit before I came here. So I was actually able to leverage all of my experience, not just from being an accounting chief there, but also from the dispersing and knowing some commercial vendor services. You actually have the ability and the flexibility to work with the developers here. And if something needs to be updated, something needs to be changed, you can easily do that. You can also incorporate that into your class and they're very easy to work with. So we do have our left and right limits, yes, but we are not so rigid in that we cannot change things that need to be updated because as we know in Forcecom, things change all the time and sometimes you have schoolhouses that are some rotations behind but here at the finance and comptroller school we have the ability to update as we go along and not only from the instructor standpoint we also talk to our students because as i mentioned before i have company grade students i have field grade students i also have branch transfer students meaning they're coming from something combat arms usually and they try to volunteer into the branch and we take their experience as well. And if there's something that can be changed, modified in any way, or completely revamped, we do that. So that's one of the beauties about being here. Amazing. So, okay, so for the both of you, right, um, what has been that high point uh, while serving as an instructor for you all? Um, and, and what would you, or what's one advice you would give to the person who comes to replace you when it's time? So for me, I think the high point for the first class we just had was the culminating event. When we see the lieutenants finally take it and put it all together, you know, open up an SA shop, we see them run a CVS cell, run a dispersing cell, and you see that all that hard work you put in over the last 10 weeks is finally paying off and they, they're grasping the concept, not just testing wise, but they're actually being able to do what you've taught them. So for me, that's absolutely been the best part. And uh, like you said, with someone coming in behind me, hopefully they take what I've done and they're just trying to make it better because that's what I'm trying to do uh, is make it a little bit better so that way we're pushing out the best lieutenants we can into the finance corps. As for me, I've had the same high point uh, several times over the course of me being an instructor here and my high point is not so much the events or perhaps the exams. It's when I have a student who on day one told me that they're branch transfer, they don't know anything about finance and they're not even finance. That's what they told me. And then by the end of the course, they're actually executing what I taught them and it makes sense to them. It clicks to the point where as they go through their exercises, they are helping other people. That is my high point. To me, that's the mark of success. When you have someone who comes in and probably will tell you they've never even seen a finance officer before and they come to the schoolhouse and they see so many of them. And at the end of it, they're actually able to say, I am a finance officer, not just because my branch designation has changed, but because I actually am a finance officer now. So that's my high point. As, for, awesome. um, as for advice, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that's awesome. Obviously the fact that, uh, you know, that, that rewarding piece of, you know, being able to see them actually move forward and actually kind of uh, implement all the things that they've learned over time. Um, now let's go back to your advice that you would give. Yes, the advice that I'll give to the instructor uh, who replaced me is leverage your experience. Perhaps it's twofold. Number one, leverage your experience because that's what enabled me to come in and teach the subjects that I that I teach now. I teach three or so different things. And the experience that I've had is actually what enabled me to make certain changes to the way that the forces were being administered or some of the information that was being put out. So leverage your experience, number one. And number two, don't be afraid to ask for help. We are a small team here and we have no choice sometimes but to help each other. There are times when we're helping each other grade or proctoring exams or you go out to the exercise for one day so that I can do something else. So you have to be able to work as a team. If teamwork is not your strong suit, I would encourage you to improve that if you're interested in working here. 
because you have no choice. We're a small team and we just have to work together. We have no choice but to be efficient in that manner. Otherwise, we are not only failing ourselves, but also our students. And our our product is our students, right? Any company would work really, really hard to put out a good product. Well, our product is all the students we have that come through the schoolhouse, whether they're resident courses or virtual courses. So we have to do what's best for them. And the best thing for us to do here, Captain Lionel, myself, the field grades, everyone else, we have to work as a team. There's no other way. Amazing. Thank you very much. All right, at this time, we're actually going to head over to the, the PME that's being taught at uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and we're going to head over to uh, Senior Leader Course and Advanced Leader Course. So over to you, Sergeant First Class Williams. Good morning. Thank you, Sergeant Singh. I'm Sergeant First Class Williams. I am the SLC instructor here at Fort Jackson. Prior to that, I was the lessons learned MCO uh, here at Fort Jackson. I did that for a year and a half. Prior to that, I had some budget experience up at Fort Drum in the 10th Mountain Division. I'm very excited to be here as a final, as a SLC instructor. It's been very rewarding so far. Just, you know, it's a critical role in developing NCOs, uh, the next generation of uh, senior NCOs, actually. So. Amazing. So uh, you, you mentioned that you did a uh, lessons learned in, in NCO before, right? That was a position. I believe that's something with C did or or something like that. Or uh, they changed it from C C did to FFID, and that's another thing that there's a lot of experience here at Fort Jackson. A lot of the different positions that a lot of people don't really know about. So you know, lessons learned is one of those uh, broadening positions that can. Uh, that you know you could really learn a lot about the finance and because we we go TDY a lot and um, travel to different uh, finance locations and training exercises to kind of find gaps and bring it back to the schoolhouse where um, TDD would uh, include it in the next training. Gotcha. So Sergeant Williams, let's let's talk a little bit about um, SLC, right? To be that um, instructor, you know, at the you know and NCOA, right? Uh, it's obviously there's a selection process that goes through uh, not only from the from the finance control schoolhouse uh, side of the house, but also the NCOA, right? Where you have to get vetted. Um, then you have to go through the meticulous process of becoming a, a small group leader, right? Um, and then after that, then actually taking, um, you know, that reign of being that SGL, and then uh, going through and and teaching the courses or us uh, facilitating the courses. Let's talk a little bit about the process that you had to go through to become a small group leader, um, and how it is also working, um, you know, hand in hand with uh, the forty two alphas as well. Right. So basically, I came from lessons learned over to. NCOA, which is on the other side of the building, right? So when I made that switch, it is the NCOA is has a lot more high tempo, right? So we have to first of all, as you said, we get interviewed, speak to the SAR major, and um, my background allowed me to, to to meet the qualifications for it. Um, we like to have, you know, I have budget experience. Also had a lot of FIMSU experience prior to that in Korea, Fort Stewart, as well as Fort Hood, right? So that's why um, if you come up on uh, like assignments, it's good to get uh, it's good to get like budget experience as well as some experience in the FIMSU, so you could be a, a more rounded NCO, so that will make you more qualified. Uh, to uh, to become a, a SGL because you're teaching um, the dispersing side of, of, of the dispersion operations and you're also going over um, the budget side of uh, finance. So it, it does help to uh, have that have that experience in your background um, to uh, to become a SGL. All right, it helps you in that transition. Okay. Awesome. And and can regard. You, can can you speak on maybe one of the uh, one of the challenging things that you you have uh, encountered while being a small group leader? Well, while being a small group leader, one of the challenges that I'm um, like like uh like ask for help. You know, ask for help. You gotta to do this job. In my opinion, you gotta come out of your shell. 
All right, so you gotta you have to come out of your shell and and put yourself out there. You got to be confident in what you're doing. Okay, be confident, but at the same time, be be tolerant. Know that you're dealing with students. Okay, know that students have different learning styles, and you you take that in and you adopt your training uh, to accommodate different learning styles. And also, um, re regarding just becoming a, a, a SGL, there's a it's a lot it's a long process becoming an SGL. Um, after you after you do get selected by some major, um, you head over to the NCOA, and then you also get evaluated by the NCOA sergeant major again. All right, so you sit down for another interview and you, know, you have to do um, PRT uh, evaluation. You have to do the height and weight evaluation. All right, you also have to pitch a class. Uh, this is all in the qualification process. So, right. um, so it, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of procedure, but there's a lot of development that you receive as an NCO going through that process as well, right? Because, you know, um, you're going through the core NCO, uh, core NCO competencies pretty much. All right, so now at this time, we're gonna go over to the to the second floor of the non-commissioned officer academy. We're gonna speak to the advanced leader course, uh, small group leader, SDL, right? Uh, Staff Sergeant Hammond, Staff Sergeant Hammond, Mike's yours, go ahead. Good morning, sir. My name is Staff Sergeant Hammond, and I'm honored to sit with you here today from the live from the NCO Academy with my TDD counterpart, who will get to speak on our relationship shortly in reference to our program of instruction, and with my instructor battle buddy, Sergeant First Class Williams. I came to the Academy. I have known that I've wanted to be an instructor since I came through AIT as a private first class. My instructor at the time, then Staff Sergeant Maroney, was the epitome of a non-commissioned officer, standards and discipline. And as a private, I didn't know about broadening assignments. And I remember thinking to myself, how can I do her job? I want to be just like her. And so I've just done the best I could at every assignment. I've been through Bragg and then to Fort Campbell um, in the Special Forces side, and then was finally given the opportunity to come to Fort Jackson. And it was a dream come true for me. <laughs> I'm definitely drinking the Kool-Aid as far as if you want to coach, teach, and mentor, there is no better position in the United States Army or the Finance Corps than, in my opinion, the Advanced Leader Course Instructor. We have about 360 active duty staff sergeants in the United States Army, and every single sergeant has to come through this course, either through Fort Jackson or, of course, Fort Knox or our other Army One school system locations. And that's a huge responsibility that I do not take lightly. And it's just an honor to be here. Sorry, Emma, that's great. Um, you know, I'd have to agree with you on a couple of things that you said, you know, about, you know, one of the best positions over there, uh, obviously. Um, you know, I've served in that position, so it's been it's definitely an honor to serve there, especially the impact that you can have on that, uh, you know, young sergeant that's coming that's looking to become a staff sergeant. I used to jokingly say, you know, you're halfway there to becoming that actual staff sergeant, right? Because that's one of those requirements that was needed at that time. Um, things have obviously changed now, but let's talk about, um, you know, maybe one of the challenges that you you thought or you might have faced in that position, right? Uh, other than the normal, you know, long hours uh, that, you know, folks might not think that happens <laughs> uh, down at Fort Jackson. Absolutely, Sarn. I think the biggest challenge for me personally is knowing how monumental my evaluation of these non-commissioned officers can be. The first time I ever had to send a student NCO home for not meeting the standard was a pretty tough experience for me on a personal level as Samantha and also as Staff Sergeant Hammond, because that can be a pretty um, monumental decision for them. And I actually had a conversation with our regimental SAR major um, because I was I was pretty bummed out for the lack of a better word, because you want everyone to succeed. 
as any leader in the army, you put so much into your subordinates, to your soldiers, to your student NCOs. And so their failures are your failures. Their successes are your successes. And so that first time um, that someone was dismissed from one of my courses, it, it affected me emotionally. And I got to have an amazing one on one conversation with our regimental command sergeant major. And he told me it's a good thing that you're feeling that you're the gatekeeper. If they're not worthy, don't let them through. And I share that with you today to let you know that if you are interested in shaping the future of our Corps, there is no better place than Fort Jackson to do that. And we take entire team finance, whether it's team AIT, team NCOA, or our officer counterparts, take that responsibility very, very seriously. And we're here for you. Awesome, Sergeant Hammond. Um, well said on, on that. It definitely is a bummer when uh, you see a student that, you know, for whatever reason, uh, either has to get dropped or even when they're, you know, not passing a, a test or something, and then eventually, you know, uh, they get the, re the, the retest and for whatever reason they can't pass it, right? You kind of start looking at yourself as an instructor and kind of maybe have to reevaluate, uh, hey, is it me or, or what's going on, right? Um, but I, I like you sharing that uh, personal personal uh, thing, so thank you. Um, now we're going to go over to Staff Sergeant Wagner, who actually serves as a training writer developer, um, and he's part of TDD. Uh, so Staff Sergeant Wagner, please go ahead and let everyone know audience wise what TDD is and what you're currently doing um, and then also share you know one of the one of the challenges in your position um, and also at the same time um, you know some of the the pros of the position that you're in and the impact that you're having across the finance court thank you well uh, Sergeant Singh thank you for the uh, great introduction my name is Staff Sergeant Wagner uh, I'm kind of very well uh, very well rounded I've been uh, in the Army for 13 years, everything from cashier during deployment and working at the uh, customer service and meal pay, all the way to being G8 and uh, chief of meal pay. So what I do is I take my uh, subject matter expert uh, that I have, and I put that into the doctrine that the instructors then teach the students. So um, myself and a very few select other individuals. We are the ones who write the course material for AIT, for uh, SLC, ALC, and then we even have individuals that write for Bullock and Triple C. Um, we do everything from individual tasks to collective uh, tasks. Um, one of the biggest challenges we have, I want to say, is trying to keep everything within doctrine. We do have to abide by the Army U and the ADDI process. So there's a lot of time consuming effort into writing course material. It's not as easily changed as I, we can just go in and make quick updates. We have to actually, if we do make an update, it has to go all the way up the channels to get approval and then come back down before we can actually implement the change. Um, I'd say one of the best benefits of working in TDD is not Instructor doesn't fit everyone. Um, some people feel uncomfortable on the podium, but they do feel that they are subject matter experts and they'd like to contribute to the core overall. So those individuals would fit perfectly inside TDD. Sarn Wagner, you know, you said something that caught me, right? Um, you know, the instructor position is 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 connected to the writer developer by the hip, right? Um, the instructor can be a subject matter expert because of that POI that's also being provided by their counterpart, right? Um, and something that stuck out to me that you mentioned, and I think a lot of people are very unfamiliar with, is the fact of you know the changes that are required when you're actually trying to change POI, right? Um, there's also dollars that that go up with that, uh, so there's a funding requirement that's part of that as well. That um, unfortunately, you know, is also part of the process. Um, typically, can you tell us? exactly how long it can take if you are aware of how um, POI does get changed? Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, so we actually, for AIT, they just finished completing a POI 6.0 uh, update, and it took about 18 months total. So we uh, got together with the Commandant at the DOT, and we discussed what changes they wanted to implement. And then from that process, we did an outline, ran it through for approval, 
And now we're actually in the phases where we've inputted everything into the database that goes to RMU, and we're just waiting on it to come back for approval. So it's on the final stage of being complete, but it's going to be rolled out for fiscal year 23. Awesome. So 18 months and it's still in the final processes. Um, yeah, but for the for the audience that's watching the dot director of training, that's what the dot is. Um, and I'm glad that you kind of brought that up because I remember and I'm pretty sure the instructors or Sarah Hammond or Sarah Williams might chime in um, because, you know, after every class there's the ARs, right? And one of the comments, at least when I was around, was always, you know, POI needs to get updated. Um, and yes, you can make those changes while you're teaching and facilitating. Um, and you can try and, you know, align it to what's currently happening um, operationally. But there is the piece of that, hey, you know, in order for it to actually fully be changed, you have to also take into consideration the amount of time that goes along with it. So um, at least in my experience, I used to always say, hey, you know, to the team, I used to say there's, there's the operational way of doing things and then there's the doctrinal way of doing things, right? Um, and obviously doctrinal takes time to change, but you have to go based off of what your um, what your organization's requirements are, what your mission is, and so forth. Um, Sarn Hammond, Sarn Williams, do y'all want to add anything to that? Absolutely, Sarn Singh. I want to jump in here and just discuss how important that relationship between TDD and the instructor is. When Sarn Wagner and I got on board last January, we actually got to sit down with Team TDD and go over the entire program of instruction and really tweak it to be exactly what we thought the future of the finance core was going to be at the mid-grade non-commissioned officer level. So I'm extremely proud of the product that Sarn Wagner and his team have created for me to teach because I may be the face of it, but he's the brains behind the operation and I'm only allowed to teach what him and his team write. So every time he comes into my classroom, I'm honored to introduce him and Team TDD because they literally create everything and research the doctrine. Something that we do as instructors, though, it kind of ties back into what Kat Mandel was saying about sharing your experience. I take pride in putting the pieces together and helping my student NCOs connect the dots between what the doctrine says and how it really works in the operational army, using those firsthand experiences and those stories, because sometimes doctrine's hard to interpret right? It's written very formally, and sometimes it's hard to understand that black and white. But if you can teach a student NCO to think critically and operate in that gray area, not only are you making them a technical expert, but you are also giving them that leadership to succeed at higher levels in other positions. So I think that's kind of where the instructor and the podium take a large part and putting those pieces together and sharing those stories and experiences so that those light bulbs go off and you see those aha moments, Sergeant. Oh, yeah, that's that oh, that's critical thinking applied one on one right there. So amazing. All right. So now um, at this point, we are going to head over to the, you know, 369 Army Pride area in uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, where we have instructors for advanced individual training AIT. Um, this is usually your skill level one um, through through four that that they 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 train. Um, they also teach um, any reclasses that are coming in. Um, so we're gonna go over to the senior instructor over there, Sergeant First Class Brown. Hey, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Sergeant First Class Brown. Um, I've been in the military active duty for a little over 11 years now. Um, and prior to becoming an instructor, I was a writer developer for AOC and SLC. Um, and one of the main reasons why I wanted to come to Fort Jackson is because I wanted to play a pivotal role um, in the support of the Army's goal by optimizing the learner experience in the classroom, right? And I also wanted to um, be a part of developing our future for finance and controllers professionals um, and the future leaders. Um, this job is challenging, but it's also very, very rewarding. Um, and I think working hand in hand with the drill sergeants down here in Team AIT, right, allows us to, you know, just focus on POI in a sense, and um, and it's a great, we have to have a, a great working relationships with, you know, the drill sergeants and stuff, and also everyone in TDD. 
Well, so Sean, Brian, um, you know, obviously you mentioned that you were, you know, a writer developer for ALC and SLC prior to becoming an instructor down in, uh, in AIT. Um, can you tell us if that was, you know, other than the, the, the you know, countless positions that are within Fort Jackson, right, uh, for finance professionals, can you tell us if that was also an advantage to you while uh, being an instructor in, in AIT? Uh, and implementing that uh, some of some of the material or, you know, do you just strictly use the POI that's designed for AIT? Um, so first, I think it is an advantage uh, for myself to, you know, work in have work in TED as a writer developer and then because I'm, I'm able to see both sides of the spectrum. Um, and when I work with Sergeant Williams, um, and Sarah Hammonds and first Sergeant Horton um, previously. Um, and I was just, you know, always trying to, you know, understand where they were coming from and why they wanted the stuff updated. But now that I'm down here on the podium, I see exactly why, you know, they were always, you know, sending updates and, you know, wanted things to be changed and stuff because essentially you don't want to be on a podium looking incompetent of the material that you're delivering. Awesome, thank you. Uh, at this time, we're going to speak to Staff Sergeant Price. And Staff Sergeant Price, you are an AIT instructor as well over there, working alongside with Sergeant First Class Brown. So Sergeant Price, Mike's yours. Um, I do believe you've actually come on uh, one of our FC profession series in the past, so you're kind of well acquainted to how this goes. Mike's yours. All right, uh, Sergeant Singh, um, thanks for Putting this together and for everyone that has a part in this, uh, digital mentorship is obviously one of the new ways we're uh, experiencing and very important to leaders at all levels, especially, you know, uh, our younger soldiers. Um, coming to Fort Jackson, I was torn between becoming a drill sergeant and instructor. I knew that time was coming up in my, my career where I had to make that choice. And honestly, I was for a drill sergeant for a very long time, just that fascination and everything, impacting soldiers from BCT from the get-go. Uh, basic combat training, and then I ended up pursuing uh, in, uh, advanced individual training instructor, and I could not be happier. I honestly think I get the best of both worlds in this position, and even more than I could ever anticipate. Everything starting from the top to the bottom, you know, uh, with the leadership we have here, the dose of energy they provide, the experience they have, taking, uh, advocating for us behind the scenes and from the front line, be modernizing while still preserving our mission and our legacy. Being part of something like that is, is monumental and such a privilege. Uh, the networking that you do here, you work with NCOs with all different calibers, so many different talent, different MOSs. That's a big part of it. Working with our civilian counterparts, that has been a very rewarding piece for me also. We have civilians that have served at any time, you can run into a civilian that has anywhere from 20 to 40 years experience. And just having that insight to put together with connecting the dots and know where we truly came from, where we've been, and now where we're trying to go, that has been an inspirational, huge learning appreciation uh, for me. Uh, why I chose this position is to diversify my, my experience in trade-off environment and I knew for a long time with all the mentorship I, were, I was receiving in the operational force that there is a lot of opportunities here, but coming here and truly seeing the resources, the experience, the networking, the caliber of talent that we have here, and the passion, and at the end of the day, that one common goal to truly provide the best soldiers for our, for, for, for our profession is I mean, we could go on and on about that. Right. Awesome. So, Sonar Brown, let me ask you this. So, um, we I know we had, you know, someone ask in the, in the comments about, you know, civilian positions versus all military. And I do believe in advanced individual training, uh, there are civilian instructors over there, right? So, could you um, emphasize a little bit or give us some more information on the breakdown of the instructors and the civilian instructors within AIT? Thank you. Yeah, so right now we currently have two civilian instructors. Um, they're both contractors. Um, they have to submit their resume and application, um, and it has to get approved, but they have to basically go through everything that we have to go through 
Um, in order to be a certified instructor, there's going to cadre training course, going to the instructor's course, and then something similar like with the NCOA, they get evaluated by myself and Master Arm Benia, who's the course director. Um, and we send all of that information back up to FCS. Um, and then, you know, we'll be, we'll be waiting on the approval from um, FCS to say whether or not they're a certified instructor. Awesome. And I do, and I, for the audience again, there are civilian instructors on Fort Jackson. I know there's some within the NCOA. Uh, they also have functional courses that they teach down in FCS as well. So there are civilian instructor positions out there. Um, as well as military instructor positions, um, but but the segment was really focused on the military instructors um, at at FCS. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, the other, you know, I was surprised actually when I saw Sarn Brown and Sarn um, Sarn Price not in full battle rattle. Uh, you know, going out to the field. You know, I know NCOA does that too. Mm. Uh, at one point, uh, when I was an instructor down there, our our uh, field exercise, we actually would stay in the field, um, but you know, things changed. But again, that was part of the large scale combat operation piece. Uh, but let's go over to uh, NCOA. Let's see if uh, they're going to give us some input on if uh, their field exercise uh, has been tweaked and or uh, changes that they see that they might be implementing or have already implemented. Sarham. So our field exercise, our CTE, our cumulative training exercise is is always changing. Every cycle there are new elements being brought to the table. And again, it goes back to that experience. At ALC, we conduct um, a 78 hour CTE with an emphasis on tactical training as well as that technical side. And so during our tactical training, we do get the opportunity for the student NCOs to use what they taught one another during their staff X presentations in the field environment. So radio comms, hand and arm signals, nine lines. They actually attend the VSB3 sim. So that is a convoy simulator. Essentially, the easiest way to describe it is like a video game, except in real time. So they get to practice a convoy operation. And something that's amazing about our team here at Fort Jackson in that sector. The civilians that work at the WTA have created a mission specifically for the advanced leader course. So from the start of the student NCO giving the convoy brief and, and the op order, all the way through the video game simulation where they carry these funds across Atropia to when we end X, it's just kind of an amazing experience. But we do do a, a tactical road march to the field operation where we carry our money. So we do have a foreign currency and a US currency that we carry with us in order to conduct the dispersing operations. And then depending on the level of experience in my class, I've assigned as high as a DDO, which is great because now they're getting additional knowledge that they're gonna learn in SLC when they have to operate at the DDO level. So they'll open their own cash cage, start their own operation and execute all of those transactions throughout the day. But I like to awesome. throw in a little, you know, a little mischievous problems where I try to, you know, steal unattended money or take away their electronic capabilities so they have to operate manually. So it's right. exciting. It's exciting. And for SLC, if, I, if you don't mind me jumping in, for SLC, we, we never usually focus on uh, dispersing for the CTE, but now we're trying to include that. Um, with, the, with working with TDD to include that into uh, the field training exercise. But our field training exercise kind of focus more on the budget side of things. So, you know, uh, so we set up a, a G8 shop. So it's usually about uh, 16 students. So may, maybe four brigades, uh, four each, and we have a G8 and we would fund money and, you know, they would uh, execute according to uh, the spending plan. Awesome. So, you know, for all those comptrollers that are watching, for all those commanders that are watching and first sergeants or sergeant majors or even the, you know, civilian workforce that's out there, you know, you heard it from the source. The NCOs are qualified, right, to actually go out there and do full on dispersing operations. And at the same time, they're also qualified to run GH shops um, as well. Right, uh, based off of the POI that's that's um, being taught at the schoolhouse, and and they have the certificates to to validate that they've been trained. So hold them accountable when they come back to the units. 
Um, back to AIT land, I believe AIT, you guys actually are doing um, a bunch with going to the field as well. And there's also like on a weekly basis, you go out to the field to ensure that not only is a technical piece being instructed down in the schoolhouse, but they're also still, um, you know, honoring the, the tactical and or that soldier level training that they need as well, since they've just recently graduated from basic training as well. Yes, that is absolutely correct. So um, our culminating training event um, is approximately four days. And the first day that we do go out, there's an eight mile ruck to the site. Um, they have tent setups, um, and then they will use, they will go through the six lanes, um, and that's reacting to contact. Um, and the drill sergeant team here at Team AIT plays a, you know, a pivotal role in um, developing those soldiers into knowing how to react to contact. And while they're doing the six lanes, we also put them on a manual dispersing mission, so FMST. And um, the second day, we basically set up um, three different locations or three different tents. One is for dispersing, one is for meal pay, and one is for um, CDS. Um, and they will do those transactions the entire day. The following day, they will use, they will, they will work in those same tents half the day, and then um, that latter part of the day, they will also um, conduct a bug brief, which is um, compiling all of the data that they use um, from the previous day in those um, areas the CVS, meal pay, and dispersing, and then they will brief um, the command team, the drill sergeants, and the instructor. And, Got it. So, so, sorry, Brian, I don't want to, I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to ask this question, right? Um, with the rollout of IPSE, you know, coming along, it's been coming along for a couple of years now and keeps pushing, right? But um, are we still training military pay in, in AIT currently? That's a question from the field, please. Yes, we are still teaching meal pay in Team AIT. Okay. Um, right before we go into that, because this is all, you know, questions for training. We also have the, the G5 portion, which I do know is being trained, but is that being, is that being, uh, is it being changed or is it being, uh, you know, has, has that been added to AIT as well? I know at the ALC and uh, SLC side of the house, they do train the g -fibs, and I know that's also happening in Bullock and, and Triple C. Uh, so I'll take that one. Yes, uh, actually, you know, speaking, we cannot say enough of that critical and very important relationship with PDD, the Training Develop uh, Writer Department. Uh, we were just discussing because one of the things our counterparts do, they come and sit in the classroom, they come and visit the area just to uh, get a feel and get uh, uh, hands-on feedback as well. Uh, so we're trying, they are, they are updating the courses right now where they're integrating some things around to integrate more of that uh, budget experience or uh, exposure. And also they do uh, get data analytics, which prepares them for a lot of the budget side if they go into that position. That's something they're integrating. We're in the fall phase right now. And that is one of the commandant's like top priority that we're uh, trying to incorporate um, the soldiers before they go into the force. Awesome. All right, so team, listen, we're about to roll up on, the, on our uh, last you know, pretty much on the on the hour that we we were allotted for this segment. Um, one thing that I, I did want to share, uh, you know, with with everyone that's tuned in is, is obviously you know they the instructors have kind of talked about you know the POI changes um, and how they work with TDD in relation to that instruction material. Um, they've talked about what they're currently doing. Um, you know, focus really is on you know on the on the on the folks that are tuned in and or. Uh, leaders out there, you know, to share these positions that are available to NCOs, officers, um, and even the civilians uh, across the, the, the profession uh, so that, you know, they they know or are aware of uh, the positions and uh, the duties that they can be assigned in the near future. Um, at this time, I would like to start off by going, we'll, we'll go backwards, so we'll start with AIT. Uh, any final comments that you might have, we'll start with Sarn Price and then go to Sarn Brown. And then from there, we'll head over to um, TDD, then ALC, and then SLC. And then we'll go over to uh, the Triple C folks. All right. So, uh, yes, I would say if you have the opportunity to come to Fort Jackson for any positions that are here, take it. 
there's a lot of opportunity. You can you can cross train, you can move around into different areas and still uh, you know get that development. The opportunities are phenomenal. And also be ready to engage, be ready to collaborate with the talent, the caliber of talent and collaboration that we have available here. Um, for me, um, like Sergeant Price just said, um, if you have an opportunity to come to Fort Jackson, I would highly recommend it. Um, being here at Fort Jackson essentially has helped me become a better leader. And um, some of my NCOs that may be watching can vouch, you know, the old specialist Brown and Private Brown, you know, um, up until where I am now. Um, just being here at Fort Jackson around um, so many great leaders and stuff has propelled me to become a better leader. Thank you, Sergeant Brown. All right, over to you, um, TDD. All right. Um, so I would just say to leave off that um, for anyone who is interested in coming to uh, Fort Jackson, that we have several opportunities. So TDDs for one, uh, if you don't want to be an instructor, but then you also have the opportunity like what Sergeant Brown did was rotate. So he did 18 months as a writer developer and now he's doing 18 months as an instructor. So you can actually do both if you uh, so desire. Um, it's great opportunity here. You get to network with some of the, the top in our profession and it's just a great career builder for anyone. Amazing. Sarah Hammond. I would say don't shy away from the tough jobs, from the jobs that make you nervous, because if you're comfortable where you're at right now, it's probably time for you to move on. Don't ever settle for being the big fish in a little pond because then you're not learning anything new. I see so many student NCOs who have the knowledge base, the personality and the desire to make a difference. But when I ask them about wanting to be an instructor, you know, no hands, no hands get raised or very minimal hands get raised. It's tough, but it's probably one of the best, if not the best position that I've done thus far in my career. So don't shy away from the tough jobs because those are the jobs, like Sarn Brown said, that are going to mold you into a better leader and help you make the greatest impact. Your scope of influence is much larger here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Awesome. Thank you. Sarn Williams. I would say get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. When I got orders to come to Fort Jackson, at first I was, uh, Fort Jackson, why would they want me there? I thought it would be better at a FIMSU or something like that. Um, but it turns out to be one of the best assignments I've ever had. Okay. Well, I, I'm from Florida, so you know it's close to Florida, so I get to drive down. <laughs> but do get out of your comfort zone. Um, challenge yourself. If your potential is not being challenged where you are, Fort Jackson is a way for you not to only have an impact on, a, on, a, on the finance core itself, um, but to really get in an environment where there's so much knowledge and then you can network as well. Um, so if you have the opportunity to come for Jackson, definitely uh, take that opportunity. Thank you very much. Captain Mindell. It's just a few things in closing. First, uh, networking, as was stated earlier, when you look at uh, the schoolhouse here in SSI and the finance school, Pretty much every officer in the finance corps will come through here at some point, uh, whether it be Bullock, Triple C, or some of our other courses. So the networking is outstanding. Also, we have a partnership with the uh, University of South Carolina. So while you're here as an instructor, you have tons of opportunity for additional education. And uh, just lastly, like I said, it's a fulfilling job, and it's a, an experience like you can't get anywhere else in the operational army. So just coming here as an instructor, it, it forces you to dig down into the doctrine because you can't teach what you don't know. So overall, a highly recommended position here. Thank you, Captain Miller. I would say, I just restate how rewarding this position is and how impactful it is that you actually get to touch the lives of some folks in the case of the Bullet students who are brand new to the Army. And in the case of branch transfers or some of my reserve students, they're just new to this particular branch to our core. Very rewarding. You have a lot of different areas that allow you to incorporate your experience. We also have a new focus on data analytics that our current chief of functional training, Major Gorilla, has helped to implement in his time here with us. So we have really expanded our offerings. So you have your opportunities too to learn from your students, you teach your students, and we also have opportunities for credentialing that allow you to continue on your path of self-improvement. So like 
some of our other guests have said, this is a very rewarding job. Sometimes it may challenge you a little bit, but a challenge isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes that's exactly what we need. And I think that some of the other panelists might share the same concept as me, that I have been challenged here. I think we've all been challenged here, but we've also grown. And that's what makes this assignment so rewarding for me. It's actually, in my honest opinion, the best assignment that I've had in my 10 years in the Army. Awesome, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Worley, uh, if you're still on, please, please come on as well uh, for any final comments that you might have. Yeah, I started saying I greatly appreciate it. You know, I listen to everybody and to be honest with you, I could not say anything any better than what everyone else has said. You know, I, and it's their testimony today is just a testimony of their true professionalism. You know, hey, take the challenge, come down. You get to take care of soldiers. You get to develop yourself. You get a little bit of uh, predictability for your family. And there's a lot of goodness down here. And I think it was Kevin Mendel said, hey, you can't teach what you don't know. You can also take a moment while you're here to dive into your profession and develop yourself. And it just makes you that much stronger when you get back out there into the operational army. You know, I, I am passionate about, uh, you know, putting good leaders out on the street. And I will tell you, I would invite if, if you're not interested, but you still want to come to your schoolhouse because this is your schoolhouse. The last thing I would tell you is uh, I'm passionate about opening the school to everybody. This is your Fort Jackson is your uh, center of gravity. It's where we develop combat power for the Finance Corps app. So everybody has an open invitation to come down, uh, go to the field with us. And hey, we take all comments and, uh, you know, cons constructive criticisms and we'll uh, incorporate uh, as such. But you're the customer. And hey, I just thank you for your time. Uh, once again, to you and Emily and ASA FMNC for, for and, and you specifically sort of saying for taking the time out of your schedule uh, to put this on for us in our profession. So thank you. Sir, I appreciate you coming on, uh, sharing those words of wisdom with us and um, allowing your instructors to come on. So, and to the instructors, please, thank you very much. On behalf of the ASAF MNC, uh, use of FEMCOM, FCS, you know, thank you very much. Uh, one other thing that we would like to point out, uh, I know Command Sergeant Major Dodge is not able to come online, but he did have some words to share. And he said, if any NCO wants to come to the Fort Jackson to serve in any capacity, they should begin communicating this up their NCO support channel before entering into the EM cycle, uh, which is an enlisted manning cycle. We can work with HRC up till then. Other variables like time on station and gapping your position to also take into account, but much harder to align once you are already in your manning cycle because then it's harder for them to make those moves. Also, HRC slots, um, you know, positions against requisitions. So that does not guarantee an instructor assignment, all right? But if you're willing to take that step in your career and go towards Fort Jackson, uh, please do start reaching out now uh, and, and we'll do that. Uh, to the audience members, thank you for tuning in, all right? Be on the lookout for some information coming out uh, in terms of uh, our next segment um, and future segments. Finance Corps School, uh, Schoolhouse will come back uh, online again uh, Colonel Worley will come back on uh, with Sergeant Major Dodge and they will talk about something else. Uh, so be on the lookout for, for that marketing. Uh, once again, we appreciate you all coming on. Uh, thank you to support and serve. Have a good evening.